This program is brought to you by Emory University. Let's fill the jury box up. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yes, sir. Send me an email. Just send me an email. Okay. Saying as I asked. Okay. I know I that. But you were talking to him. I know him. Okay. I know what he's asking. Yeah. 
一个样子的检测对方有没有，他只能从你只能要求他从外观来判断。如果是我，我认为这个案子是如果证据不够的话，我就不再起诉，我就 dismiss 这个案子。这只是说，我就认为这个案子证据不够。At the at the close of the trial, I need to be given instruction. Okay, so that there's no confusion. When we're done with this trial today, we're done for the day. But Okay, there is no class or instruction in the evidence. It is not beyond a reasonable doubt. This is an criminal case. It's civil case of the bombings of the evidence, and then also. The law says you need equal weight to the evidence, whether it's circumstantial evidence or direct evidence. They have to decide how much, how important the evidence is, but there is no difference in the law between circumstantial evidence and direct evidence. The law doesn't say one is, is more important than the other. So they, they, they decide what's. So on Tuesday, I will send an email this weekend. How to, how to weight the evidence. The expectation is going to be that on circumstantial and direct are the same. We should all be in the Cab County Courthouse by 8.45 Tuesday morning. So you're going to ride the cliff to get there. And I will meet you there. Ronnie and I will meet you there. Judge Jones, who I think some of you met, will probably meet us there. We may go see a hearing, and then at 10 o'clock, I think the sheriff's office is going to transport us on the prisoner's bus back to the jail. So you'll get to see how that works, and then we will tour the jail, and then they will bring us back to the courthouse, and then we will come back to the law school and have our little wrapping up ceremony. Tuesday afternoon, okay? But we should be done with that fairly early on Tuesday afternoon. So you should have Tuesday afternoon and evening to pack and get ready to go. We will be leaving early in the morning on Wednesday by bus to go to the airport to go to DC. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So enjoy the trial, and I hope everybody has a great weekend. Shall we start? Yes, sir. <coughs> Today the case is a civil case and a violation of the civil coverage to the intoxicated person has begun now. The first the prosecutor to give you open statement. Your Honor, dear jury, today uh, here instead of us is Mr. Dan Jones, who is 50 years old. Uh, working for the corporate liquor store as a night manager. On June the 5th, 2006, at around 8.45 p.m., Mr. Walter Watkins walked across 7th Street. He staggered and stumbled while walking across the street. When he reached the, the gate of the liquor store, he entered it and proceeded to the counter and had a brief conversation with the court clerk, Mr. Dan Jones. After the conversation, Mr. Dan Jones turned away from Mr. Watkins for a short while and returned back to the counter in the place of cash register. After the transaction, Mr. Dan Jones left the liquor store, holding a brown paper bag in his hand, which was not with him when he entered in. After he walking outside the liquor store, he was detained by investigator Mr. James Bear and his partner Mr. Donald Smith. Um, searching for the bag, there was a bottle of unopened and sealed uh, Thunderbird one in it, and Mr. Watkins stated that it was bought from the Cartwright uh, Cartwright liquor store. He spoke some words slurred and had an odor of alcohol. His eyes were glassy and bloodshot. When performing the sobriety test on him, he was unable to walk 
toe to a uh, heel to toe in a straight line. Pick up coins from sad work. Oh, touch toe, uh, touch finger to nose from arms, uh, from arms extended to the side. He was then found guilty for public intoxication in a trial and paid a $25 fine. After he was arrested for public intoxication, the investigator gave the citation of violation of regulation 3102 to Mr. Dan Jones and his employer, the labor stall. Mr. Dan Jones admitted that he did sell a bottle of inexpensive wine to Mr. Uh, to a gentleman within 10 or 15 minutes of the investigator coming into a store. That, that might be Mr. Watkins. Your Honor, dear jury, here the, prosec the prosecution side will establish that Mr. Dan Jones and his employer, the Catholic Labor Stall, for violating the NATO Labor Commission regulation. 3102 for knowingly selling intoxicating beverages to an intoxicated person. The defendant attorney is Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, this case is about regulation of knowingly selling intoxicating labor to intoxicating person. The only answer of this case is my client, Dan Jones, never knowingly selling the liquor to an intoxicated person. He isn't guilty. My client, Dan Jones, who is 50 years old, honest man, has served in our national army as a loyal soldier. He never violates the law when he is working. Dan Jones has five years of experience of being an employer of the cut-rate liquor store. The store and my client have kept the business running on the right track. Actually, the store has very strict regulation on this aspect. And the employee who sells the liquor to an intoxicating person will be fired. And my client has been very cautious from the first day he became the employee of the store. Dan Jones is living in the same district. He is living in the same neighborhood, just like you, ladies and gentlemen. I want the district to be quiet and peace, just like you, ladies and gentlemen. The last thing I want to do is to sell the liquor to the drunk customer to break the peace of the district, to lose his job at the same time, with the only benefit to sell a cheap bottle of wine. June 5, 2006, my client has a busy time from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Mr. Dan Jones can't remember there was a deal happened between Wilkins and him, and what he can remember is that he did sell a bottle of inexpensive wine to a gentleman within 10 or 15 minutes of the investigator coming into the store. Mr. Jones made a number of sales during that period, but he didn't sell liquor to any intoxicated person. He didn't know Mr. Rankins. 
he couldn't remember whether Mr. Wagon had ever been a customer. That was a few minutes transaction. Mr. Jones thought that that man did not appear intoxicating to him based on Mr. Jones' observation. All the evidence we will present in the court will show you that Mr. Jones didn't knowingly sell alcohol to any intoxicating person, nor would he ever do so. Ladies and gentlemen, please use your power to help my client, Dan John, to give him a impartial verdict, not guilty. Thank you. Now that the first witness come into support, the prosecutor will conduct the examination. Good morning, Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and the prosecutor of the state. Now I will begin the uh, direct examination to the first prosecution witness, Officer Beer. What's your name? My name is Officer Beer. <laughs> What's your job? I'm a police officer. Oh, I was a police officer before I was an investigator of the uh, Liquor Commission. How many years have you worked for the Liquor Commission as an investigator? For well, seven years already. What did you do before you became an investigator? Well, as I said, I was a police officer for eight years. Eight years, right? Yes. Did you work for the Liquor Commission on June 5th, 2006? 2006, June 5th, yes, I did. Yeah. Could you clearly remember what had happened on that evening? Yes, I think I can remember what happened. Where were you at on that evening? At that time, I was at the intersection of Jackson Avenue and uh, the 7th Street. What did you do there? I was asked to, to do an investigation. It was a complaint by, by someone. How did you get there? I drove my vehicle. Who else did you get along with you on that evening? Well, I, I had my partner, Mrs. Smith. What were you doing in your car? I was observing the uh, the the uh, liquor store at that intersection, the cut rate liquor store. How good is your eyesight? Well, there was not, nothing obstructing my eyesight. I was able to clearly uh, view the, the whole intersection and also the cut store. Hold on a moment. I, I, I mean, your eyesight. Your, your eyesight. My eyesight is yeah. it's perfectly fine. Okay. What did you see in the store from 7.40 p.m. until 8.45 p.m.? PM? Well, um... Is there any special in the store? Well, there were a lot of customers <coughs> walking in and out, but I, there was nothing special. What did you see at approximately 8.45 p.m.? Well, I saw one person at the, uh, at the northwest side of the intersection. Uh, he was later identified as Mr. Watkins. He was leaning against a lamp post. Why did you notice Mr. Watkins is special? Well, I saw him. He was leaning on a lamp post and then he uh, was, well, he first of all, he, he pushed himself off the lamp post and then he was trying to cross the street to, to go to the liquor store. But then um, he as he was crossing the street, he staggered and he stumbled. He was not able to walk in a straight line. Uh, he appeared to be a strong. What, what was he wearing? He was wearing a uh, dark pants, a uh, white shirt, and I think, well, I, I think he wore a uh, raincoat, lightweight tan raincoat and sneakers. What was he carrying with him before he came to the store? Well, he carried nothing. He, he did not have anything in his hands. What did Mr. Watkins do afterwards? What did he do then? Well, basically, after he crossed the street, he went, he, he tried to push the door. No, um, when, when he got to the uh, curb, I think he fell on the, he fell down, and then he uh, got up again and, and he entered the liquor store. Did you focus on Mr. Waterkin from the moment 
Okay, and to close the door, and to your left. Do you focus on me? Well, there was a moment that I couldn't see him, but then there was a glass window which I could see the inside of what happened, and I, I did see Mr. Watkins. What did Mr. Watkins do after he entered into the, entered into the store? Well, first of all, I, I, I would have to say that the glass window was somewhat blocked by the uh, advertisement signs, but then I was still able to see uh, what happened from shoulders up. And I, I did see Mr. Watkins go into the cashier, and uh, he was talking to another person who was later identified as Mr. Jones. Who was this Mr. Jones? What's his job? Well, he, he was um, a uh, sales clerk in the uh, liquor store. He was the only uh, person uh, operating the liquor store at that time. After the conversation, what did Mr. Dan Jones do next? Uh, well, I, I, saw, I saw them together facing each other as if they were having a conversation. And then Mr. Jones then went to the back of the, back of the uh, store because I wasn't able to see him. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, he came back and talked to uh, Mr. Watkins again. And then Mr. Watkins left. What was Mr. Watkins carrying with him uh, when he left the store? Well, when he left the store, I, my partner and I, we went, to, we went up to him. And then we saw he was carrying a bag. And later, we, we found that it was a bottle of, of liquor, which was some Thunderbird wine. Then what did you do to Mr. Watkins? Well, uh, first of all, I asked for identification. He provided, and I asked for his um, address and per, uh, yeah, personal particulars. And yes. Did Mr. You you still said that you uh, confirm a test to him? Yes. Um. Yes. Uh, could you explain uh, what's the result of the test? Well, because uh, I see he was intoxicated, I asked him to perform a, a field sobriety test. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I ran through three tests with him. Uh, first of all, I asked him to, to walk in a straight line, mm -hmm. and then I asked him to touch his nose with his arms extended, and then I also asked him to pick up a coin. He failed to perform all three tests. Did Mr. Watkins tell you where he got the sunburn wine? Yes, he did. Where have you got the wine? From the Capri liquor store. Are you sure the sunburn wine belongs to one kind of the extorted beverages? Are you sure? You mean whether the wine is... Belongs to is one kind of the extorted beverage. Intoxicated beverage? Yes, it's a wine. Yes. How did Mr. Watkin look like when you detained him? Well, he, he appears to be intoxicated in the conversation. He was, he appears to be, he was slurred. And also, when I was approaching him with my partner, from, from about three feet apart, he, uh, I, I, I smelled his order, uh, he had an order smell on him. Of liquor, yeah. You arrested Mr. Watkins for what reason? Arrested Mr. Watkins. What do you mean? For what reason? Well, he was intoxicated. After me, Mr. Watkins was arrested, sir. Where did he go? I went back to my vehicle. Or I went, to, first of all, I went to the liquor store to, to find out what, what happened inside. Did you see, what, what did you see, Mr. Watkins? Well, there were there were people, and I saw Mr. Dan Jones. That was the first time I uh, talked to him. Mm, did you see the counter? Yeah, I did see the, the counter. Objection, leaving. The question is leaving. How was the width of the counter? The, 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 Objection, the, Your Honor. The question is leaving. The objection will discontinue. Well, I did see the counter. The counter was about um, two and a half feet wide. Like between the customer and the cashier on the other side, it was about two and a half feet. Would you show for the jury? Show it to the jury. Oh. About like this. 
What else did you find in this work? Well, there were a number of liquor in the store. What kind of liquor? Mm -hmm. Well, at the back of the store, I was able to, 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 to find the Thunderbird wine. You found the Thunderbird wine, right? Yes. How did the Thunderbird wine look like? Well, it looks as, just the same as um, what Mr. Watkin he was carrying when he was outside when I, I intercepted him. Just the same as Mr. Watkin oh, carrying him. Identical, there. yes, identical. Mm -hmm. Then what did you give to Mr. Watkin? Objection, Your Honor, the attorney is trying to testify. I just repeat no his word. No objection, subsequent. Because ask another oh. question. What did you give to Mr. Dan Johnson and the Cartagrees store? What did I give? Give, give, give. Because you are the last speaker. Yes. What did you give? Give something to Mr. Dan Johnson or the Cartagrees? Objection. Objection. The question is leading again. Okay, no question. Thank you. Now, the defendant attorney. Turn to the cross examination to witness. Good uh, morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Beer. Yes. Um, Officer Beer. Officer, <laughs> <laughs> Officer Beer. <laughs> you saw Watkins straightening himself up before he entered the store. I saw what? You saw Watkins straightening up himself. Oh, I did not say that. Before he entered the store, but that was in your report. But I did not say that. You cannot put that to me. Um, shall I open your... I haven't have a copy of your report. Um, you wrote this report uh, two months ago. Yes. And the report is complete. Yes. It's accurate. Yes. Is truthful. Of course. So everything you just said or you didn't say will be in the report. Um, but I, I, um, so everything in the report will accurately affect the situation. It will reflect the situation. Yes. So could you see here? Of the cover liquor store. That's right. Yes. So. But that doesn't mean that he straightened his raincoat. No, I mean straightening himself up. Yes. Before he entered yes. the store. Is right. that true? Is yeah. that what I was That's, asking? Yes. And the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. But that was that wasn't what you were asking before. <laughs> okay. I will uh, address my question more clearly. You saw working. Straightening himself up before the end of the store. Yes. Thank you. You saw Watkin stopping in front of the store for a while before he entered the store. A while? What do you mean by a while? It can be five hmm. minutes, thirty minutes, he five hours. For a moment. He yes. pauses he for did. a moment. Okay, thank you. Watkins could answer your question after a restaurant outside the store? Well, somewhat, yes. And Watkins could provide his ID on the request? Yes, he did. And pro he provided his name on the request? Yes, he did. He provided his address under the request? Yes, he did. So Watkins didn't completely lose his ability to control himself? Well, I did not say that. So at least he can provide the ID oh, yes. address? It's a leading question. But it's quite a foundation. I can be your witness. Yes, uh, you made a conclusion. That is not true. So you're leading with the jury. Yeah. With John. Yeah. Your objection is sustained. And I agree with John. Um, well, Jones was in the store at a time. And Jones, high time. Yes, he was. 
Um, there were several other customers in the store at the same time. Yes. And then Jones is the only staff running the store. That's right. And the, the store was quite busy at that time. Well, there were a few people. I'm not sure what that's busy. And there are several other customers in the store. Yes. Is that true? Okay. And Jones couldn't see Watkins was staggering outside the store. I don't know. I don't, I, how, how would I know what he saw? Okay. So why are you talking to me? Can you see someone just walk outside the door? You cannot. Because if you are talking to me, you are not, not able to see what's going on outside the, outside the room. Right? Well, that's what you are saying. That's common sense. And you, and Jones couldn't see what came was stumbling across the street. I wouldn't know that. Well, he could have paid attention to what happened outside the store. Okay. That could have been a camera okay, outside. Thank you. Oh, I know. Um, thank you, Officer Spear. You didn't see Watkins staggering in the store. Oh, he did. You couldn't see Watkins stumbling in the store. What's that? Here? And the um the field sobriety test is to accurately test whether a person is intoxicated. Accurately. Well, it was a it was a field test. And if it's a test, it's a test to see, to examine whether a person is intoxicated. Initially, yes. And Watkins didn't do the test in the store. He did. And a person who is lack of sleeping could have bloodshot eyes as well. Is that true? A person what? A person who is lack of sleeping could have bloodshot oh, eyes that, as well. Know. I don't know. I can't, I can't tell. Okay. And from my experience, I know that a person who is also it's, 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 it's quite uh, uh, no related, related to this case. But because it can show there's an other possibility that a person like, um, would be intoxicated or not. Well, in any event, I, I don't know um, what a person here, is and my question is, has um, special eyes This or question or is over. Jones has a conversation with Watkins. John had a conversation Well, they were facing each Watkins. other. That's what I saw. Yeah, they had a brief conversation. <coughs> that was in the report. You want to go over your report again? Sure, go over the report again. Okay. <laughs> um, Your Honor, may I approach that witness? Your Honor, may I approach that witness? Um, could you please look at this? Objection. This document should show the council first. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this report is from your side. You should have in your hand. But uh, right. uh, we, we have to look at your copy. Make sure what, yeah. copy what the uh, document is. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> Take your time. We've got plenty of time here today. We don't waste your time. Should I ask? Should I show it to the judge? No. Thank you. Um, um, at this point, Jones is standing and appears to have a conversation with him. Is that true? Well, Can you read he it? He appears to have a conversation with him. Okay. I don't, I don't so, know whether he had a conversation with him. Okay, so Jones appears to have a conversation with Watkins. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and you didn't know the conversation, but which opposition that are possible conversation? You don't know that. Well, as I said, he appeared to have a conversation with him. I don't know whether he, in fact, actually had a conversation. Yes. Had a conversation well, you can only see Watkins at his back. Yes. And from the shoulder up. Yes. So you're not able to tell how Walken talks or did not talk to Jones in the store? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether okay. they, they did. Your view was blocked by the advertising at the window. As I said, yes. And you can only see Watkins and Jones from the shoulder up. Yes. You cannot see what's going on with their lower part of body 
and hence that seems abnormal. You cannot well, see. I was unable to see what happened to the to from sugar down, but I don't know whether their hands are normal. Look, this could be very like this is nothing he can see from outside, right? So because this is the most of the part of the body, and you are not able to see it, right? Yeah, but I wasn't able to see whether okay, their hands are you. normal or not. Okay. Um, officer here. Yes. You are an excellent investigator. Well, I can say that I'm a best investigator. I'm not sure what I'm excellent. Okay, so you are the best investigator. Oh, I am. <laughs> um, with eight years' experience to be previously to be a police policeman. Yes. So you would do every diligent effort to have your work done. Yes, I would. And at the time around eight forty-five, you were outside the store. Yes, I was. And you were taking surveillance at the store. Outside the store. Yeah, out, outside on the store. I mean. Yes. And you were at least sixty-five feet away. You mean outside? Yeah, from yes. the store. When I was outside, I was well. I was across the street. Yeah. It was and about sixty-five in, feet away. Yes, so at least sixty-five feet away. You knew your view was obstructed by advertising on the window. Yes. And you know that affected your observation. No, not wholly. I was able to see right. from the shoulder. Right. And that affected, right? Affected your observation. No, I, I don't agree with this. Because that it was blocked. You cannot see the whole, like the whole body of them. Yes, I couldn't see the whole body of them, but I was able to see from shoulder up, as I said. But that could be everything. Many happens. Below the shoulders. Well, I don't know. That's your conclusion. Okay, and you didn't approach closer at a time. You didn't. You just stay in your vehicle. Yes, I did. And you didn't ever try to move to a better position. You didn't. No, I didn't. You rely on your so-called efficient experience. So-called efficient. Rich experience. You well, rely on that. Well, that was the best position. I can see what's happening in the store. So it just and everything you do is just to put innocent people into jail. That's not right. I'm just trying to. Objection! Objection! Right. We've drawn. No further questions. Thank you. <laughs>
maybe a man come to our store to buy them. By, at that time, he was not drunk. But later, he get an accident, car accident. And the thing uh, make me very careful about the customer. <clears throat> and I know that was a big deal to sell liquor to intoxicated person. That's all? That's all. Okay. On the evening of June 5th, 2006, what did you do in the concrete liquor store? I was on duty in the store. Around 20 minutes before the investigator came to the store, what had happened? Uh, I can't remember clearly. I just remember that I sold and bought a bottle of inexpensive wine to someone, someone that I can remember. Okay. Did you notice what had happened to the customer before he entered the store? I cannot remember the detail because maybe that it appeared to me, he appeared to me uh, normal. So uh, I do not focus much on him, and also I was busy on my work. And as Mr. Beer said, there were also some several other customers in my store. So uh, I don't focus much more on the video. I can't remember. And I'm old. Okay. Was there anything special when the customer entered the store? I don't notice that. I can't remember because it is really normal. There probably nothing unusual happened. That's all? Yeah. Okay. But I, I'm sure that person must not be intoxicated. Otherwise, I will remember. That's all? Okay, thank you. No further question. Uh, prosecutor, cross your time. Thank you, my mother, and thank you, the jury. Mr. Ben Jones, at 8.45, June 5th, 2006, you are right behind your contract, is that right? Yeah. And the voice of the contract is almost 2.5 feet, that much, is that right? Uh, I can't the remember. almost uh, distance uh, of the I contract. Should, I should see my report and refresh my memory. Okay. Yeah. Um, two, is that two and a half feet? The contract, the, the, the wealth of the contract is a certain contract, and you have worked uh, behind the counter for three years. You can't remember your contract? The cash, the cash. You can't remember it. You have been in that country work for three years. Sorry, I'm old. I cannot get my my ear listening good. Please repeat again. And slowly. Okay. You have worked behind uh, your country for three years, and the country, the wealth of the country, is five years. Five years. Okay, five years, and the, the country, the wealth of the country is. No more than 2.5 feet. 2.5 feet. Yeah. Like, like that. Yeah. Okay, please stand up, okay? And uh, I want you to show. At that night, yeah. uh, you, uh, you stand here. Imagine this is a counter yeah. and your position. Yeah. Uh, like that. Yeah. So your, uh, your, uh, your distance be, uh, from the counter is like that. Like this? Like this. This. Okay. This? You mean? Yeah, the distance. Uh, you mean oh, the yes. distance uh, I from the counter, is, right? The distance the... I from the counter. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the moment how far I from the counter, you know, because that, that's nothing special. So I can't remember the detail. I have speak many times, I can't remember. So you are working. You are working in the country. Of course. And, then, yeah. and then, uh, always, in a normal time, you stand like that. You like right. Always, because so many. Uh, you you just said it's a busy time. 
and so many customers uh, to buy things from your store. So you, you just you go away for long distance, and your customers can get your things from the counter. Is that right? Uh, it's really yeah, oh, it's it's exactly true, but I really yeah. can remember because that's not on the report. I can remember everything not on the report. Okay, thank you for a bad memory. <laughs> Objection. <laughs> Attack on my witness. Okay, <laughs> they are uh, they are infected. Your health, your your health is in good condition at that time. Uh, 50 years old, can eat, can sleep, I can run. Okay, good? so you have a good sense of smell, just like normal people. I don't know how you define well smell. You have no disability in your sense of smelling. Not funny yet. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, my honor, uh, I have a uh, request that my colleague may help me to give us an examination. Can I? And can show us. Show us. Objection. I don't know if that is that is not the same subject. First of all, you should tell us the exam what's the examination okay. about. I, I'm and then has make the judge to make the decision whether we should go on this examination. Okay. Sure. Thank you. And that's okay. 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 It's a bottle of alcohol. And um, my colleague will drink, drink a, a bit of it. And we can show our uh, witness the smelling sense is normal. Is that Objection. Okay? Objection. I think this kind of uh, des to, uh, des des uh, test has no meaning because the counselor obviously cannot drink. That's obviously he did not know what weapon strength that night. And obviously, there's uh, different circumstances in this court because everyone is focused on that circumstance. So at that time, my client is busy and he is careful. He is to take care of his business, and that no is objection. Great. Objection. Yeah. It cannot it's object. A, on it's our a, it's the turn of all counsel speak. Speak. It's our turn. It's my turn. So I just want I to express my It's okay. my turn. Yeah. So please. Allow us to do that demonstration and uh, let us know and let the jury know that our witness. This is an important demonstration to prove that the defendant can have a good sense of smell to detect whether a person is intoxicated. Uh, and if the defendant has no uh, any, any test should be carried by experts instead of the counsel. Objection. This test should be performed by common people because we are common people. We should have the common sense. Common feeling, right? <laughs> common people. Why are you so scared to be take to take the test? <laughs> common, common people should be decided by the court and the experts, not ourselves. Your, your, your Honor, the 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 all the demonstrations should be carried on the stimulus of consciousness. All else it is no use. Your Honor, the defendant claims that he could detect whether a person is intoxicated from the smell of odor. And hence, we have this demonstration to show. He is an experienced staff in a liquor store. If he can't tell uh, who is intoxicated, how can he work in a liquor store for, for many years? And the policy in the liquor store is forbidden people. Uh, to uh, to sell, uh, to sell uh, intoxicated liquor to uh, intoxicated person. How can you do that? Sure, prosecutor, so, you have been working as a prosecutor for many years, so you can charge anybody in this position and make it into jail, even he is innocent.
right? So if you then you need a tail, right? Our responsibility as so prosecution so is law enforcement. Uh, so you want to have that demonstration with us? That's right. <laughs> Yeah, just a little. How can you show the intoxication? I can do the three tests. I can do the three tests. Yes. That's what you need. You know? right. I can touch my nose. I can walk straight. You just drag the. You have any coins on the floor? I can pick it up for you. For no more than a minute. Exactly. So why would you say I'm intoxicated? Right. So what's the distance? The distance is more than three feet. I didn't say that more than three feet. What is approximately the distance between you and the customer? I can't remember. Approximately. Approximately, I can't remember. You can ask me. Do you have been working? Okay. The country is 2.5 feet. And you just show us that you, your, uh, your position is no more than that. So the uh, maximum distance is like this. Okay? The so can you smell the breath of alcohol? I can smell it. Thank you. You can smell it, right? Yeah, I can smell the alcohol. You can show that to the jury. <laughs>
experience show the youngest child? Like how do you, how do you think? Can you flash your memory? I can't remember. Maybe just example. You came to me. I will think you are a girl, and maybe I do not remember how you are. Um, okay. So what did he say to you? You have conversation. What did he say to you? I will told you again and again. I can't remember the detail because it seems to me very normal. Okay. So as a start in a liquor store. Do you have the responsibility to find out whether your customer is intoxicated? What do you mean by responsibility? But the policy requires us to not to serve intoxicated person. So now to serve intoxicated person, yeah. you should first find out whether he is intoxicated. Is that right? I should be based on my observation. Yeah, you depends on your observation. So you should first observe them. Is that right? Okay. The the one center bar is not just behind the counter, fifteen feet away. Is that right? Uh, repeat your. The center bar, the one in the yeah. store, center bar. Is stored behind the counter, 15 feet away. Uh, I have no sense of the distance. Uh, if okay. the report said that, so it's if so you if you want to get center bird, you have to turn around and walk to the shelf. Yeah. You with me? So you have to turn around and walk walk away for a while. So what did you do in that period of time? I didn't remember the detail. Because so, the whole course I cannot remember. It seems very normal to me, so I can't remember. It's very, maybe very soft at that time. Uh, so you, you admit you have a channel ground to get something? I can't remember. Okay, so uh, you you don't take your responsibility, and uh, you just uh, you know all the things. Objection, Your Honor, conclusion. The, the council is okay, strong the conclusion. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let me first thank you for your time and attention this morning. My name is Yugo Ho, and I am one of the prosecution attorneys representing the state. For now, I will begin my closing statement. For this present offense that we have today, we must first establish four components. That the defendant carried out the transaction knowingly that the person was intoxicated, that there was a sale, that the beverage was intoxicated, was an intoxicated beverage, and the subject was intoxicated when the sale was made. It is mutually agreed from both sides that the subject contained an intoxicating beverage, being the Thunderbird wine. In determining whether the subject was intoxicated at the time, um, it, the offense states that the subject can be appreciably impaired. So what does this mean? When you say appreciably, in the case of, excuse me, in the case of State versus Harrington, one of the North Carolina cases, the term appreciably impaired was defined. It is not defined as falling down drunk or gross impairment. It is as long as the person is noticeably or measurably intoxicated. In other words, there are visible symptoms that he was intoxicated. So since the subject was seen by Officer Beer who's stumbling around outside the store, there was a strong sense of odor of alcohol. There was slurred speech, as claimed. And he also felt the three, and most, most importantly, he felt the three uh, sobriety tests. 
the subject is therefore visibly intoxicated. So these two elements, we believe, are not disputed. What is presently disputed here is whether the defendant did make the sale to the specific person, who is Watkins. And second of all, if whether he knew the customer, the consumer, Mr. Watkins, was intoxicated at the time he made the sale. With regards to the first question, um, it is submitted from the prosecution side that even though Officer Beer's view was obstructed and could not see them below the shoulder length, and even though there was a fleeting moment that they couldn't see him, Ms. Officer Beer could still see the subject when he was outside the store until when he was inside. This led, led him to arrest um, Mr. Watkins when he left the store. Additionally, both Dan Jones, Mr. Dan Jones and Officer Beer both agreed that they did see a man who was disheveled. So their descriptions coincide with each other. On this basis, we argue that there is no possibility of misidentification. Furthermore, as, Ms. as Watkins left the store, he was carrying an unsealed bottle of Thunder Thunderbird wine, which he did not carry with him as he entered the store. He could not have stolen the wine and must have purchased it since he would not have gone up to the cashier and had this appears to have this brief conversation with him. In addition, the fact that Officer Beer saw the defendant leave the counter and coincidentally, the Thunderbird wine was located at the back of the store. In addition, Dan Jones could not answer or give a reasonable explanation whether he went back to the store to get the wine. It shows that, um, it, it shows a high, very high possibility, if not a complete certainty, that Dan Jones did in fact sell the wine to this person within that time frame and the fact that the subject was carrying the Thunderbird wine, which, this, which Dan Jones could not give an explanation to, would show that the Thunderbird wine was sold to Mr. Watkins by Dan Jones. So moving on to the next question, it is whether Dan Jones, the store owner, knew that Mr. Watkins was intoxicated at the time when he sold him the wine. The opposing counsel argues that there is no reason, perhaps, for him to sell the wine to an intoxicated person considering there's no incentive or there may be an additional risk of him losing his job due to the shop policy. Nevertheless, we argue that the definition of knowing in the offense includes the state of should have known, which essentially means turning a blind eye to the obvious. So his, him being negligent to whether the person is intoxicated would also satisfy this element of knowing. So in order to see whether the person is intoxicated, Dan Jones identifies him from pure observation, perhaps by looking at elements of his slurred speech, whether his eyes were bloodshot, whether he could walk in a straight line, and whether he smelt of alcohol. However, from our cross-examination, we see that Dan Jones is, happens to be unclear or cannot have any re recollection of many aspects of the of the subject's features, as well as who the person was. More importantly, he could not remember the, the width of when the customer approached him, when he's been working as a cashier for five years. This is part of his everyday job, and he fails to recall uh, approximately, even an approximate amount of how far the distance was. So from a little demonstration there, it was quite exciting, I would say. And even from that small demonstration, I just took one sip of liquor. He could already uh, smell that sip of alcohol. So imagine someone who failed three sobriety tests and, and um, accordingly should have consumed large amounts of alcohol to have failed them. And for him not to have noticed this and still sold him the wine, it is negligent on Dan Jones' behalf. Considering that there was a shop's policy against 
selling intoxicated beverages to intoxicated persons. Um, Dan Jones should have been more observant and careful, as he claimed. But as we, have, as we approach this question, we can see that this was not the case. Being busy or not, having, not remembering much is no, no excuse for breaking the law. Considering all these circumstances, we conclude that Dan Jones' ju judgment in the present case is not reliable and not convincing of what he said. The adduced evidence suggests that the, the, the Dan Jones would have known, or at least should have known, that the subject is intoxicated. Prosecution is not trying to discredit his character, but we emphasize that he has not been careful with whom he sold these intoxicated beverages to. And for that reason, we see him liable for his own actions. <clears throat> the opposing counsel also argues that Officer Beard did not move to a better vantage point to observe the entire crime scene from taking place. However, we point, we point forth the fact that if he had moved closer or had made any sudden movements, it may have scared the um, defendant away or have made him not sell that intoxicated beverage. As a police officer, it is their job to secure, uh, to, for law enforcement and securing them and maintaining the peace of our community, especially to protect us citizens from unauthorized interference by intoxicated individuals. Ideally, this is why in the state of Georgia here, we have offenses such as public intoxication and criminal offenses of selling intoxicated beverages to people who are intoxicated. Thus here, I conclude to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the evidence you have heard would prove to you beyond reasonable doubt that the defendant and his employer, in fact, are guilty of the Regulation 3102 offense of knowingly selling intoxicating beverages to an intoxicated person. Thank you. Thanks. The defendant's attorney, your first statement, please. Your Honor, Consuls, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, at the beginning of this case, in the opening part, we have demonstrated Mr. Jones did not knowingly sell any intoxicating liquor to the intoxicated person, namely Mr. Watkins. And now, let me first remind you again that this is a criminal case. <laughs> so, we don't have the burden of proof. All the evidence has to come from the prosecutors. The prosecutors must prove this case is beyond any reasonable doubt. And all elements should be beyond any reasonable doubt. They have admitted it. But in this case, through the whole process, have you heard anything from them as evidence for the second element, sale? We didn't argue it, but it doesn't mean they don't need to prove it. If they lost it, that's their negligence of the duty. And there is another meaning of beyond any reason for that. It means the prosecutor must eliminate all doubts, not one of them, not two of them, not ten of them, but all of the doubts. Or they cannot be regarded as prosecutors. I think now, in your minds, 
There is something very important I should to repeat and emphasize. On that day, our client, Mrs. Jones, was working inside his shop. But as we have seen in the direct and cross examination, there is no evidence to show what was going on after Mr. Wilkins walked into the shop. All the prosecution is based on assumptions. How beautiful assumptions are. With assumptions, I can be rich, I can be powerful, I can even be Obama Black. Because assumptions means it is possible. But unfortunately, assumptions are not equal to evidence, especially in this case. So, these notice things. These are assumptions. And in this case, I think all the convic conviction should be established on evidence instead of assumptions. Why? Because this is America. Our forefathers have left us the liberties and the rights of the citizens as the most precious gift from generation to generation. In America, we would rather 10 guilty people walk in the street due to the lack of evidence than an innocent person was put into prison just for some ridiculous assumptions. And further, I want to talk about something as to Mr. B.S. Testimony. He has an honest face, even. But a face doesn't mean much, so much to us, because face sometimes can betray one's heart. And Mr. B is a good person who has been working for the government for almost 15 years as a policeman at the first than as an investigator. So he should have known how to investigate and how to seek evidence. But what did he do at that time? On the day, what he did is just... Oh <laughs> okay, I use my... What he did is just stay in the car. Even though there were obstacles on the plate glass, even though he could only see the parties from shoulder up, he did not move. He did not drive his car to a better spot. And he did not get up to the car, step close to the glass, to the glass and have a look. I think this kind of behavior outside this shop would not disturb anyone inside it. But what he was doing was just staying in the car and making very easy assumptions. It is true that this kind of job is not easy and sometimes tedious. But this cannot be an excuse for the assumptions, for his negligence of the duty, because a conviction can be essential to one's life. It may ruin one's future. And thirdly, let's come back to our witness, Mr. Jones. 
He is a man from grassroots. And never have a duty, uh, and never had, had a dirty record in his past 50 years. With his diligent work, he became a manager. He loves his community and enjoys his life. Who this kind of man take the risk of a crime just for the slight profit of a bottle of wine? I think the answer is in your mind. And during the whole process, the prosecutors gave us a lot of objections. They tried to prevent me and my colleagues from analyzing this case to you. And even an experiment. In my opinion, it is not valid. Because it doesn't mean anything except the ability to smell. But the ability will rise from people to people. And sometimes when you listen to the music, you can also do your homework. But at that time, you don't know what you are listening. So ability cannot prove anything. This is a legal shop. Everywhere is a liquor. Everyone who drink a swallow of wine can release some odor, but it doesn't mean they are intoxicated. <clears throat> so now, I want to end my closing. But before the end, I recall a very short story, which was told by the great lawyer, Gary Spence, during a trial to make it clear how you, the wise jurors, can use your power to realize justice. Now let me tell you in short, a young boy wanted to challenge an old wise man. He wanted to prove a man can't be wise after being old. So what did he do? This boy brought a bird, covered it with his hands, approaching to the old man and asked, do you know what is in my hands? The old man replied, a bird, boy. The boy continued, then please tell me, is it alive or dead? The boy's plan is like this. If this wise man said it is dead, the boy will open his hands, let the bird fly into the sky. But if the wise man said it is alive, then the boy will use his hands to crush, 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 until this bird is crushed into death. How could the wise man do? At last, the wise man said, I know the power is in your hands. Just let it be free. So in this case, we know Mr. Jones is not a man who has dirty record. And I sincerely wish our investigator could have taken the investigation more carefully and more responsibly. I hope you, wise jurors, will return the only verdict that my client is not guilty. This is not only for his own life,
but for the proper operation of our national system. So cherish your power. And don't let Mr. Jones suffer anymore. He is a man in his 50s. He deserved a comfortable, peaceful life. So please, don't hurt him again. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's time to give the jury to have our discussion and make your decision. And the 15 minutes group. Burden of proof is the burden of proof. Is beyond is um a preponderance of the evidence. Preponderance of the evidence. No, not not uh, so you need to instruct the jury about that and also that they can give way okay so to, while they're figuring out that to, uh, i just want to, to say the direct right evidence and so can say that. all the evidence has the same weight in the law wonderful to see you guys okay. mixing it up okay small point usually when we're in court here lawyers don't talk to each other all right they just address Okay. I didn't want you guys to go away with the impression that you get to have fist fights between the lawyers. <laughs> but I like to see the enthusiasm. That was great. Alejandro and I were back there going, this is fantastic. And God, I wish I could get my students to pay as much attention. So, fantastic, wonderful. Thank you for your hard work. Um, I think we're going to have an instruction from the court as to the burden of proof. Then they'll deliberate separately, right? Remember, the extent you and to the extent you can deliberate in English so that we can hear it, we would appreciate that. And then once we have both verdicts back in, we're done for the day. Everybody have a great weekend, okay? Alex, this is the last day Alex is with us. He's going back to Chicago this afternoon because his wife is finishing her residency program, so give him a round of applause. <laughs> Is that right? It sounds right. I mean, that you guys have. To, if you say that it's, you you decide the weight it's going to be yeah. given. Once we choose to believe the substantial evidence, then it 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 is equal it equals to the non substantial evidence, the direct evidence. Yeah, and and you have to decide what what makes it. How the how the evidence comes together, but in terms of the law, there is no difference. One is not one. You, you guys need to join your jury. 
so you, when you are a kid, uh, what is the circumstances around this? I mean, for example, well, the, for example, the, he didn't have a bottle in his hands before. He had a bottle in his hands afterwards. Uh, circumstantial is. Investigator Beer says he smelled of wine, so most likely he smelled of wine inside the store, right? I mean, that's, that's circumstantial evidence. And kind of evidence also be moving to... You guys have to... I, we can't have a whole thing. So. Yeah, you need to proceed. Okay, so that was not